He glanced at the luxury car parked on the side of the road and couldn't help but ask the owner in front of him two questions. What do you do and how do you do it? <laughs> I'm a stockbroker. Stockbroker. After listening to the owner's answers, Chris decided to interview for a stockbroker position, but his wife mocked him. Not an astronaut? Chris could only silently endure because he was now a failure. Rent was two months overdue, and his wife had to work two jobs every day to cover their bills. And their son only can go to the cheapest daycare. Over the years, this is how they lived, but it wasn't always like this. A few years ago, Chris invested all his savings in a batch of expensive scanners, both he and his wife fantasizing about changing their lives with it. However, the new generation scanners Chris invested, although slightly clearer, cost twice as much. Doctors were unwilling to pay for it, and the machines remained unsold for years. Chris spent all his time promoting them, but his car was constantly being ticketed by the police for parking near hospitals. This time, the police simply towed his car away, and he could only watch helplessly. In order to change his life, he decided to try the job of a stockbroker. In order to look more formal, he entrusted the scanner to a hippie. However, as soon as he received the application form, he saw the hippie had run away with the scanner. Without hesitation, Chris chased after him and followed him to the subway station, but still lost sight of him. Losing a machine was equivalent to losing a month's worth of living expenses. His only gain that day was an application form. Chris realized that they were looking for 20 interns, but only one person would be hired. Nevertheless, he still went to the company and handed the application form to the manager of the human resource in person, hoping to leave a good impression. But the busy manager didn't give him a chance. Outside, Chris happened to meet the hippie again. This time, he wouldn't miss him again. Chris ran onto the bus and got back the scanner. When his wife saw him return with two scanners, she made up her mind to never live this kind of life again. He tried to regain his wife's trust and told her that everything would be all right. You said that before. When I got pregnant, it'll be fine. So you don't trust me now? Whatever. I don't care. He arrived at the door of the company and intercepted the manager of the human resource to further promote himself, but the manager was in a hurry and had work to do. To get this chance, Chris said they were going the same direction and asked if he could take the same car. In this way, he had enough time. He kept introducing himself to the manager, but the manager's attention was on his Rubik's Cube. At that time, Rubik's Cubes were still quite rare, and there weren't many tutorials on how to solve them. Chris took advantage of this opportunity and, with his mathematical talent, attempted to solve the Rubik's Cube. The manager wanted to see how he would do it. Chris explained the methods of the Rubik's Cube and even the driver started studying it. He explained as he solved it, and the manager was very much looking forward to Chris's performance because he had never seen anyone solve it before. This was the moment that would change his life. Chris quickly solved one face, which already surprised the manager, but completing the entire cube was not that simple. Time passed slowly, and the manager's destination was already reached. There was only one face left to be solved. His attention was focused on the Rubik's Cube in Chris's hand. Finally, Chris solved the Rubik's Cube, leaving the manager in disbelief. Chris proved himself and made a deep impression on the manager. However, when the manager got off the car, he didn't pay. Chris asked the driver to take him two blocks further, and the meter kept rising, but he only had $5 left in his wallet. Chris instinctively held onto his bag tightly. He had only one option, run away. When the taxi stopped, he immediately opened the door and ran out. Insert dialogue. But halfway through, he remembered leaving the scanner in the car and turned back to grab it. Chris managed to escape the driver and ran into the subway station, just making it onto the train at the last moment, but the scanner got stuck outside the doors. The subway started moving, and Chris had to let go. A month's worth of living expenses just disappeared like that. Since he lived too far from home, he couldn't pick up his son, so he had to ask his wife to do it over the phone. But on the other end of the line, his wife said, Chris, I'm leaving. I have my things together, and I'm taking our son, and we're going to leave now. These words caught Chris off guard, and he ran back home, stumbling along the way. The house was empty, not a single piece of clothing left in the closet. Then the phone rang. He thought it was his wife, but it was actually the manager of Human Resource Department, informing him that he could participate in the job interview. Chris earned himself an opportunity. The next day, he went to the daycare and picked up his son early. Now, his son was everything to him. In the evening, the landlord came to collect the rent and demanded that he move out the next day. Chris pleaded for more time and offered to repaint the walls. 
the landlord agreed to let him stay one more week. The next day, Chris was painting the walls when there was a knock on the door. This time it was the police. Chris had accumulated too many fines and needed to pay them off all at once. He could only write a check, but the police needed to verify its validity at the bank the next day. Until then, Chris had to stay at the police station. The interview was the next day and his son hadn't been picked up yet. Chris had too much to worry about. He humbly asked his wife to pick up their son and they agreed that he would be sent back at 6 p.m. The next morning, the check was confirmed and Chris wasted no time. He couldn't afford to lose this opportunity. Fortunately, he made it on time because he rushed over. He could only wear his work clothes for the interview. With yesterday's paint still on his face, the boss shook his hand with disdain, but Chris remained composed. He started off by sincerely sharing the experience of being detained by the police last night, which made everyone burst into laughter. Then he expressed his willingness to learn diligently. However, it was clear that the boss looked down on Chris with only a high school education. The boss asked Chris a tricky question. If a guy walked in for an interview without a shirt on, and I hired him, what would you say? He must have had on some really nice pants. Chris aced the entire interview, but he only found out later that the six-month internship was unpaid. Chris hesitated. Out of the 20 interns, only one would be hired. No salary for six months meant he had to sell the remaining six scanners and risk everything he had for just a 5% chance. He returned home, erased the words, Chris, you suck, on the wall, symbolizing a fresh start. At 6 p.m., his wife hadn't returned with their son yet, and he was worried that she had taken their child away. It wasn't until evening that his wife finally came back and a weight lifted off his shoulders. Her sister had arranged a job for her in New York. And even though she didn't want to leave her child, this time she was leaving Chris for good. Looking at his sleeping son, Chris decided to take the chance. He moved with his son to a hotel that was half the rent they paid before. While playing basketball with his son one day, the son expressed his desire to become a professional basketball player. But Chris said that like father, like son, likely implying that his son would be just as terrible. The enthusiasm in the young boy disappeared instantly. Realizing his mistake, Chris told his son, Never let somebody tell you, you can't do something. Not even me. You got a dream, you got to protect it. These words were not only for his son, but also for himself. Hope slowly returned to his life. Chris finally managed to sell one scanner again seeing his son eyeing the snacks in front of them. He offered to buy him one, but his son maturely declined. Like that one? How much? 25 cents. Chris began his internship, and the company provided them with contact information for other company's employees, urging them to use every means to persuade them to invest. The person who brought in the most business would have a higher chance of being hired. During his 10-minute lunch break, he intended to eat something. But instead, he saw a homeless man holding the scanner he had lost at the subway station. Chris quickly chased after him, but accidentally got hit by a car while crossing the street. Fortunately, Chris was not seriously injured, but his shoes were lost in the accident. In the remaining minutes, he searched for his lost shoe. But in the end, he returned to the company with only one shoe. Because he was African-American, the manager always made him run errands. Chris. Yes, sir. Would you give me some coffee, please? Chris never refused, but he felt belittled, lacking the appreciation he deserved. Chris hadn't sold any scanners for a long time, and his landlord was demanding the rent. But all he could do was stall. There is no substitute for the original movie. A good film is worth watching it yourself, but you don't know where you can watch these movies? Use Superbox. With Superbox, you can access all live TV channels in 4K quality. It also provides access to over 13,000 movies and series and updates with the newest content very often. The total cost for one of these is two months of your cable bill. Then you never have to pay fees or bills ever again. Click the link in my bio and use my code to get it at a better price.